Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Starting off over at wired.com, Microsoft open sources.net saying it will run on Linux and Mac OS X. Satya Nadella's rapid reinvention of Microsoft continues, and yet another bid to make up lost ground in the long march to the future of computing. Microsoft is now open sourcing the very foundation of .NET, the software that millions of developers use to build and operate websites and other large online applications. And it says this free code will eventually run not only on computer servers that use its own Windows operating system, but also atop machines equipped with Linux or Apple's Mac OS, Microsoft's two main operating system rivals. He says, we want to have a developer offering that is relevant and attractive and valuable to any developer working on any kind of application, Uh, says uh, S. Soma Soma Scar, the 25-year Microsoft veteran who oversees the company's wide range of tools for software developers. So, Uh, Obviously, with this move, Microsoft is embracing the reality that modern software and online services run atop of a variety of operating systems. I mean, this is reality, right? So, uh, and that Windows is no longer the dominating market force the way it uh, used to be. So, pretty interesting. Um, As always, we'll be keeping an eye on this to see uh, what comes of it, but uh, still pretty interesting. From TechCrunch, Red Hat launches a Linux container beta with Docker and Google Kubernetes support. Red Hat recognizes the changing face of enterprise computing, involves containerization technology, and to that end, they announce a beta release of their Linux container platform called Red Hat Enterprise Linux Atomic Host. Containerization is a new trend that offers a more efficient and faster way to deliver applications than virtual machine technology. In a sense, it's another step in virtualization that takes the concept and strips it down even further to produce greater resource efficiencies and faster deployment. So uh, pretty interesting, you know, containerization is one of those things that is, you know, uh, yet another reality. It's, It's just something that you have to deal with if you're in IT and or software development and that sort of thing. From PCWorld.com in the World Beyond Windows blog, OpenSUSE 13.2, supercharged with smoother setup, system snapshots, BTRFS, and more. OpenSUSE 13.2 has been released. As with the recent Fedora update, the latest release of OpenSUSE took a year to develop instead of the standard six months as the organization retooled its development practices. SUSE Linux has now been around for over 20 years, and it's still going strong. As usual, the latest release serves as a foundation for developing Novell's SUSE Linux Enterprise and brings some significant new improvements. So, pretty cool. Among them um, is the streamlined installer, BTRFS, and file system snapshots, which is kind of nice. OpenSUSE uses the new BTRFS file system by default. Pretty neat. And uh, yet another faster setup tool, along with the usual other upgrades, newer versions, patches, etc., etc. So pretty cool. Definitely check it out. From the register over at the register.co.uk, uh, desktop Linux users beware. The boss thinks you need to be managed. Uh-oh. That can't be good. Desktop Linux users, IT has noticed you and decided it's time you were properly managed. So says VMware, which yesterday at its vForm event in China, let it be known that it will deliver a desktop virtualization solution for Linux desktops. uh, VZilla says it hasn't bothered doing so before now because so so few people use Linux on the desktop at work. And those that do are self-sufficient, so IT leaves them to their own devices. 
Uh, but VMware says its customers now realize that in this highly regulated age of the mega breach, the unmanaged Linux desktops probably aren't a tenable solution and therefore plans to take the bits of its desktone desktop as a desktop service, which already handles Linux desktops and build it and build an on-premises equivalent. So interestingly enough, uh, this is going to be developed in China where VMware has just opened a new lab and promised a US $1 billion investment over the next five years to be dedicated to market development and innovation specifically in China. Aha, uh -huh. very, very interesting. From linuxgizmos.com, a dev board runs Yocto Linux on Altera ARM plus FPGA system on a chip. Pretty neat. Uh, New Work Elements 14's uh, Lark board, SBC, runs Yocto Linux on Altera's uh, Cyclone V SX system on a chip and offers a USB blaster 2, a camera, and expansion interfaces. It looks kind of like a Beagle board except different. Uh, the Lark board sells for $940, definitely is not a Peagle board, <laughs> is one of the more powerful ARM development boards you're likely to find, at least if FPGAs are what you're looking for. It's designed for development of high volume applications, including automotive, medical equipment, video surveillance, and industrial control. The Lark board, which is manufactured by Embest and uh, designed, branded, and distributed by uh, Element 14 is built around the Cyclone VSX system on a chip, which is uh, uh, 800 megahertz ARM Core Tex A9 that runs Linux. So pretty cool. Definitely check it out if you need that sort of development uh, capability. From ITWire.com. This story I'm including because I, I found it to be a little disconcerting about the developments that have been taking place, but I'll leave it at that. Um, Debian is officially dropping the K-Free BSD as the official architecture. They did not specifically say why other than they couldn't do it in the time frame uh, that they needed to have it done in. Um, however, the unspoken is uh, the new version of Debian is using System D uh, for its startup management, and System D only works with the Linux kernel. And the K Free BSD is the Free BSD kernel with uh, the Debian userland packages. So obviously, that is kind of doesn't really work. Um, unfortunate, but you know that's the reality. So uh, if you want to read more about it, uh, it's linked up in the show notes. From Market Wired over at marketwired.com, TimeSys partners with Gizmosphere to provide embedded Linux solution for a Gizmo 2 single board computer. I thought this was pretty cool. Uh, Mark, uh, TimeSys Corporation is the provider of the industry's most easy to use and affordable embedded Linux solutions. Have Today they have announced that they've partnered with Gizmosphere who is a nonprofit open source development board community to provide embedded Linux solutions for purpose built applications designed with the powerful Gizmo 2 platform. The latest offering from TimeSys further reinforces the company's commitment to bringing ease of use to open source developer communities and expands the company's software support for Gizmo Sphere platforms, which already includes support for the Gizmo 1 board and Explorer kit. So the Gizmo 2 platform features a an AMD GX210HA dual-core processor, Radeon HD 8210E discrete graphics, making it ideal for a variety of embedded applications requiring high, high graphics acceleration and low energy consumption. Uh, it also showcases accelerated video and native C, C++, and Python application development and includes access to Linux Link, uh, which is TimeSys's comprehensive suite of tools for building an optimized embedded Linux platform. So pretty cool. Definitely uh, check it out. Um, it, it looks to me a little bit akin to the Minnow board, but uh, still pretty neat nonetheless. That will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.